We're back with another edition of Kids Corner, the high school hockey report here on the State Champs Podcast Network. I'm Jonathan Kidd, along with Sean Belichin. Sean, how are you today? Tremendous, John. Always a pleasure to be sitting talking uh, high school hockey with you, man. Today, we're going to be talking about the Mr. Hockey Race. And at the end of the show, we're going to talk about what we feel is the top five games of the week. So first off, we're going to be talking about Mr. Hockey. How did they do it with Mr. Hockey? How did they... It. Well, you know, one of the things a few years ago when, when we decided to do this, is, as you recall it, state champs, I think it is vitally, vitally important to reach out to as many coaches as you, as you can reach out to and, and get a, a baseline list, if you will. So, you know, thankfully, knowing a few guys and getting to know a few guys over the years, to say that the coaches are helpful – you know this. It'd be an understatement. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot stress enough how cool it is to hear from guys that you've never even met face to face. You know, uh, and and just go, hey, you know, take a look at this guy. Take a look at that guy. So what I do is I, I utilize. Uh, I think I had fourteen coaches at the beginning of the year, and you just come up with a list, and then we whittle it down because. In a perfect world, I'd love to put 25 guys on there, um, but we want we wanted to keep it around 12 to 14. So what we did is we, we kind of came up with a general consensus, and that's what this list looks like. And, and the key thing that I always tell everybody is the list is fluid. And what I mean by that is there might be a guy that was perhaps overlooked at the beginning of the year, and as the season has come on, uh, there's no overlooking him. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, Drew Welsh from uh, Trenton. Here, here's a young man that didn't make the initial list, but as I wrote in the piece in State Champs, when multiple coaches come up to you, uh, to your face, and say, you got to put this guy on the list, to me, that's very telling. So he went on the list. So, uh, John, you know, that's how we do it. And, and by the end of the year, um, you know, I, I reach back to some of the guys that I originally talked to, and I like to reach out to a few of the guys that – you know, um, I didn't talk to at the beginning. You get their take, and, and you kind of come up with a consensus for it. So that's what uh, that's how the process, I guess, works itself out. You can see Sean's candidates for Mr. Hockey on our website, statechampsnetwork.com. Today we're going to talk about the defensemen. Yes. Because – they don't get the love like they do with the forwards. Amen. They're always overlooked. They, they really, they really are. And and I'll tell you what, John. If you look at defensemen in high school hockey in recent years, I mean, we've been blessed. And and the group this year is phenomenal. And I know they're guys that you're familiar with. I think we'll start with Sam Brennan. Sam Brennan is often, in my opinion, overlooked on his own team because they've had so many good forwards the last couple years. And obviously Adam Conquest is a guy that, you know, a lot of people take a look at. But Sam Brennan is a guy that does a bit of everything back on on the blue line. He's about a a point a game player. Uh, A kid that it, it seems like he's been at Northville forever, and well, that's because he has been. Jack Sargent, you've seen Jack play. Yep. Jack is phenomenal. He's he's a tremendous player. He's a, he's a very exciting player. I think another guy that falls into that category. And in my mind, I if if you were to talk about the guy that took the biggest step in his career, it might be Jake Bonet from from Stevenson. He he was a good player before. Yep. He's a tremendous player now. He, he he totally controls the game. He's a monster back there, does does so many things. And it's funny, I don't want to quote the coach because uh, I'm not sure if he wants me to, to, to quote him. Oh, but, why not? Uh, no, nah, well, an opposing, <laughs> an opposing coach used that exact quote. He said, he's a monster back there. And uh, finally, Jordan Kovacs. I, I, I think, you know, again, Warren De La Salle winning the state championship last year. I think everybody talked about the firepower. And, you know, you have a couple really good forwards, exceptional forwards on that team last year. You know, Kovacs is another one of those guys back on the blue line. So much of what they do runs through him and his vision and his ability to move the puck. And I think you see it at the National Hockey League level now how important it is uh, to to really start things with your defender, to start things on the blue line. And uh, uh, certainly, uh, to me, John, and there are probably four or five other guys that we could mention, but I think sometimes the defensemen kind of get overlooked in 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 the um, 
in the player of the year category. Are you starting to see more in high school hockey with these defensemen? They're scoring defensemen. Absolutely. Yep. Well, and, and I, I, that's that's a, a sign of the game now. It, it really is. I mean, um, having that puck carrying defender is, is so important in the National Hockey League now. Uh, you know, offense is generated that way. So, uh, so many of these guys are, are, are doing it. And so, if we felt like the defensive defenseman was, was kind of disrespected before, I, I think it's almost two times now. It really is. But a lot of these guys can play both ways, and that that's uh, obviously important. You know, they can bring the physicality when need be it too. I'm going to throw in the goalie here. You have Will Trigge from yep. Livonia Stevenson. Stevenson had their share of goalies over the last few years. What sticks out of Triggy. You know what I, I like about him is he did everything the right way. He knew he wasn't going to get much playing time with Cullen Barber there. And Cullen Barber obviously has has moved on. Uh, you know, he, he's up at Ferris now. So, you know what? He paid his dues and, and he listened and he asked and he leaned on both Cullen and, and Coach Mitchell. And of course, Dave is a, a guy that played at Western Michigan and knows a little something about that position uh, being a goaltender himself. And He's done everything right, and when the opportunity presented itself, um, he's made the most of it. He was really good last year. I think he's been fantastic this year. Um, uh, You know, John, if I may, I'm glad that you brought that up. Again, I wish that I could put 25 guys on the list Mm -hmm. because there's a kid at Detroit Country Day that's been playing some phenomenal goaltending as well. There are a few really, really good goaltenders, guys capable of of moving on, Uh, but, you know, when – you have a limited list. I think uh, we went with the consensus. It's it's funny. Um, out of the coaches that I talked to, I'm I'm not joking when I say this. Every single coach mentioned Will, and I put a lot into that. Much like we were talking about earlier with Drew Welsh, when multiple coaches mm-hmm. came up to me, it was actually at the end of the M I H L K K L A A showdown. I I had multiple coaches saying, "Look, this kid's got to go on the list." I when multiple coaches were saying Will Tragey. I think that speaks volumes because, to me, there's no better compliment than uh, coming from the great coaches across the state of Michigan. And does it help that Coach David Mitchell, uh, he played goalie at Western Michigan, does that help build a goalie? Absolutely. There's, I, don't, I don't think there's any debate about that. You know, he's a guy, Dave's done such a tremendous job as a coach, but I, I think he knows a little something about goaltending as well. He's a r- darn good goaltender back in the day. I, if Dave was here right now, he'd be beat red. But, um, you know, to, to be able to go on and, and play at, at Western Michigan as he did, uh, I, I think it, it tells you something. So certainly, you know, Cullen Barber to, to move on as he did. Uh, Will now has a bright future ahead of him. Um, it, it's going to be interesting to see how far Will takes us this year. All right, so we're going to be talking about uh, what we feel is the top five games in the state for this week. These games are not in any particular order. Um, we're going to start with the game on Wednesday. Actually, I'm going to be taping this game for state champs. You'll see the highlights on Sunday at 9 a.m. on Fox Sports Detroit. It is Liggett against Dearborn Divine Child. This game will be on Wednesday at the Taylor Sportsplex. Liggett is 10-2, and two, and Divine Child is 6-3. and three. These teams met on November 30th with Liggett winning 5-3. to three. What do you see in this match? First of all, you are such a pro to get your plug in there, the state champs yes. plug. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Uh, Liggett, Liggett is a very interesting team to me. You know, I, I, I think people forget, you know, they've, they've had some really good teams over the year. And, um, you know, they won a state championship back in, in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. That was the year it was. Liggett was a team that I was looking at and is right on the fringe of, of, of getting in our, our top 25. The 5 nothing loss to Saginaw Heritage, don't read too much into that. Saginaw Heritage is a darn good team. They've moved up to Division One. I. I think J.J. Bamberger's done a fantastic job with them. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So don't read too much into that. And Divine Child is intriguing. I, I like this game, John, because these are two teams, in my opinion, that are kind of flying under the radar. Mm. Maybe, yeah, you remember, Divine Child flew under the radar all last year, man, yeah. and, and and look how far they took it. But I think they're two teams that are kind of flying under the radar. And how often have we seen it, John, where come playoff time, like we saw last year, yeah. uh, a team just stops flying under the radar and just starts beating team after team after team to get to USA Hockey Arena. So I think these are two of these teams, and and that's going to be an intriguing one, and I, I envy you because I wish I could be out there Wednesday to watch it with you. Now, in that game against Saginaw Heritage, it was on December 30th. 
How much is Russ going to be playing in this factor early on? That's a long time, but you know what? It, it's funny that you bring that up. I was I was looking at some of the the schedules last night. There have been teams that have been off for a long time now, mm. and uh, it depends on who you talk to. Uh, the the old rest versus rust. <laughs> I, I think it's circumstantial. It depends. Did it give you time to get yourself healthy, to maybe get some guys that were banged up back, or, or to get them at a higher level? I don't know that it's the never-ending argument of rest versus rust. I, I guess we're going to have to take the wait and see. There's going to be some games up in Traverse City this weekend. A couple games we saw that are intriguing is on Friday afternoon, we have Marquette against Grand Rapids Christian. Marquette is 6-6, six and six, but they have won their last two games over Selena and Nagani. Grand Rapids Christian is 6-2, and two, and they have won their last two over the past weekend. So what do you see in this matchup there? Well, you know, the first thing that jumps out to you is I don't look overlook Marquette. That would be the first thing. I, I think when you knock off Celine, you know, we talked about it last week. Uh, Paul Fassbender is a guy that's done a tremendous job, and he's got a tremendous al- amount of respect from other coaches and and that that speaks volumes so you know Marquette is is a dangerous team and you know up there in in the UP Mm -hmm. this year John there are multiple good teams there there really are there are multiple good teams this year and uh, Marquette is going to be one of those teams that I tell people don't look at the record I don't think the record defines them I think Cranbrook might be the poster child for that. Mm-hmm. Don't don't look at their record because the record does not define them. But I think that Marquette is one of those teams. I, I have been somebody over the years, John, that that I I've said I don't think people realize how good hockey is on the West Side either. People talk about the UP a lot, rightfully so. Obviously, uh, Southeastern Michigan. Um, Grand Rapids Christian is another one of those teams. I think they're just waiting to break the seal, mm-hmm. if you know what I mean. Because you've seen uh, Forest Hills NE take long runs. You've seen Grand Rapids Catholic Central take uh, long runs with with Coach Slobodnik. Obviously uh, Coach Joel Brazil and Granville. I think Grand Rapids Christian is waiting to have their coming out party. Forest Hill Central, how can I forget them? Coach Zaschek and Coach Buffet have done such a tremendous job there. I think Grand Rapids Christian is a team that's that's waiting to break the seal. Might this be the year? Well, I think when you get matched up in that great tournament up in Traverse City uh, against a team like Marquette, that's a, a, a good opportunity for you to make a stand on Saturday, we have an, another intriguing matchup between Utica Eisenhower against Granville. Granville was 10 and0 going into this past weekend they lost seven to two to CC. Eisenhower is nine and one winners of three straight they they will have to play Traverse City West on Friday before Granville. but Utica Eisenhower, the Mac conference gets lost in the shuffle even though, there was a MAC conference team who won the state title a couple of years ago. You, you and I should almost do a story uh, on the MAC conference and the hockey yeah. uh, going on there, huh? Yeah. Remember we did that yeah. a few years ago. We, I think the tagline was, it's not known for football anymore. Bob Hall is a big reason for that. Coach Hall has done such a tremendous job for so long. And, and to me, he, here's the thing. Um, a lot of times you can look at a record and say it's empty. Well, look at who they've beaten. We talked about Granville last week. Granville doesn't have anything to apologize mm-hmm. for losing to Catholic Central. Catholic Central to me, John, is head and shoulders above everybody else right now in, in, in state. That's their only loss. I mean, they've got some good wins on top of that. Eisenhower's only loss is Houghton. You know, Corey Markham's knocked off a few teams in his yeah. time, so there's no loss in, in that as well. So, yeah, I'm intrigued because these are two teams, in my opinion, that are definitely top 10 teams in, in uh, Division One, arguably all of the state, and something's got to give in a game like that. I looked online before we started this. The MAC Red is a little down this year, but does this help Ike for down the road? What, what we keep talking about is these types of games that will help them against like a UED or a Rochester United comes their regionals. I think so, absolutely. You know, there, it, I firmly believe in the battle-tested way, and I think if you look at the way – coaches are scheduling in recent years a lot of coaches feel that way coaches are loading up now you're seeing guys you know we're going to go play in the tournament up in Traverse City we're, we're going to go and play up in the UP we'll go to the west side where do you want us to go the anybody anytime mantra really seems to be prevalent in high school hockey and I, I love that that's one thing John that, that you see in high school hockey that maybe you don't see in other uh, other sports. And uh, that's pretty stinking cool. I think high school hockey should embrace that and own that. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to go to the UP now with UD Jesuit going to make the trip to the Uper to take on Calumet. 
UD is 6-7, and seven, but they just ended a four-game losing streak this past Saturday with a big win over Port Huron Northern. Calumet is 4-8-1, and one, but like you said earlier, the, the schedule they play, don't underestimate the record right now. No, you know, UAD is, is a really intriguing team to me because I, I, I think UAD has shown they can play with anybody, and unfortunately the, the record doesn't reflect it. Uh, this is a team, we're not that far removed from UAD kind of being a mainstay at, at USA Hockey Arena. It seemed like no. they were there uh, oh, every year for a while there. And then they play like CC or Brighton in the it, semifinals. Exactly. And it's unfortunate. And, and they're another team that, that I think Coach Bennett said he's had them just one step away oftentimes. But, you know, they're, they have the talent. I think they're capable of... Um, you know, knocking off a team or two along the way. Calumet is interesting because, uh, John, you might remember last year, I forget exactly what it was, but they, they came out of the gate, um, I think it was an 4 and one I think was the record, and then they basically lost one game again mm-hmm. for, for forever. Calumet is so dangerous, and I, I'm, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier just for effect. When you have Calumet and Hancock and Houghton mm-hmm. and Marquette, and the Sioux, the Sioux's got a good little team this year. Those teams, I mean, that's a grind up there. And, and they, also, they their last two games they lost was to Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, and Brighton. Mm-hmm. And they have also played Cranbrook and Eisenhower. Absolutely. I, and that's why, John, and I, I, you keep telling people this. Dig a little deeper. Don't look at a team's record. Take a look at who they played. Take a look at who they lost to. And quite frankly, oftentimes, they can parlay those losses into learning experiences and turn them into wins when it matters most. And finally, our last top game of the week, Detroit Catholic Central against Cranbrook. They're going to play Friday at Cranbrook and then Saturday out in Plymouth at the USA Hockey Arena. CC, they lost their first two games of the year to Culver. Now they have rode a nine-game winning streak. They play poor here on Northern this week, so it will probably be a ten-game winning streak. Cranbrook, people forget they are now in Division One. now. They've been in Division Three forever. They're 7-5, and five, but they have a four-game losing streak right now. They lost to Gross Point South, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Plymouth, and Rice. Sean, do you feel like this would be a good momentum for Cranbrook if they either sweep CC or at least get a split? Well, you know what? It, w- it would be true. I- I'm going to repeat what I said. I think Catholic Central's head and shoulders above everybody in the state right now. I mean, for, for, for what it's worth, uh, Coach Cal's done such a, a tremendous time. And it's a busy week for them as well. As you mentioned, you know, they, they've got Port here in Northern, and then you have to go to Wallace, and then you have USA Hockey Arena. Would anybody be surprised if Cranbrook won, though? I mean, uh, when you've got coaches a caliber of, of Andy Weidenbach and, and, and Scott Locke there, and you have all the talent that they have, um, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they ended up taking one of those games. And, and Cranbrook is a team that, in, in my opinion, they are the poster child for don't pay attention to the record. Mm-hmm. You know, that is an unbelievable team. Um, I think they're going to take another long, long run. But right now, John, I, I, I just think, I think Catholic Central's too deep. I, there's, there's seemingly no weakness. And, and the thing that, that you have to bring up about – Catholic Central is, you know, we were talking earlier in the show about their defensemen, about about defensemen across the straight state. Their team defense has been unbelievable. Yeah, they can score a bunch of goals, but I think the biggest thing that jumps out to me is the way that they limit you. Mm-hmm. And and that's a, such a huge factor because it becomes so frustrating to just, you know, be at it, be at it, be at it, and then you get one transition and boom, the puck's in your net. Yep. That is frustrating to endure. So um, it, it'll be intriguing because you know CC's going to bring out the best in Cranbrook. So that'll be intriguing to see. I'm going to get out there on Saturday night to be sure. And with CC, they went through that stretch where they went through four head coaches in four years. Do you feel like now – they have the system now with Coach Cal. You know that he's going to be there for a long time. Absolutely. You know, and you, you have uh, you have Coach Moss there as well. And, you know, Cal, it's a perfect fit. You know, he's – Cal's local. Cal's a CC guy. I think everybody knows, you know, went to Michigan and and, and beyond. And um, – I, I joke with Coach Cal a lot. Like he he was born to be Catholic Central's uh, head coach, and I, I got all the respect for him. He's a, he's a good dude, and I think he could be that coach for 
many, many years to come if he chooses to be so. He'll be the next Gordy St. John. He could be. He could be. Uh, there's a legend, uh, no <laughs> doubt about that. But, yeah, definitely. He he could he could be there for, I, I, I think, as, as long as he wants. And lastly, here on Kids Corner, we're going to make a special shout-out to Brian Sullivan, the head coach at Woodhaven High School. He coached his 400th victory this past Saturday against Riverview Gabriel Richard. He spent 19 years coaching at Gabriel Richard, and he spent over the last decade at Woodhaven. So congratulations on his 400 victory against a team that he coached at. Yeah, isn't that amazing? You, see, you spend 19 years there, and it just so happens that the schedule configures itself like that. That's phenomenal. 400 wins. I mean, think about that. You know, Here's the thing, John, that, that sometimes we don't talk about, maybe people don't know. These are guys with lives. These are guys with families. Mm -hmm. These are guys with jobs. This isn't their job. This isn't, you know, this isn't um, Mel Pearson at Michigan. This this isn't Jeff Blaschel at at, uh, the Detroit Red Wings. These guys have jobs. And, uh, you know, to, to be that committed to it. Uh, it's it's absolutely phenomenal. So so big time shout out to Coach Sullivan. Congratulations. That is a great great accomplishment. I'm good friends with Ricky DeSanto, the coach at Gabriel Richard. Sure, he played for Brian Sullivan at Gabriel Richard, and they poached against each other this past weekend. So that was part. I know. Ricky didn't want to take that loss. It was bittersweet to see his old coach get that victory. Oh, no question. You know, it, it's it, it, the pride comes out. There, yeah. There's no doubt about that. The pride comes out, and, you know, you, you you played for him. You know what he's all about, and I think – First and foremost is 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 the pride comes out. You you think about what you have to do better. You use mm-hmm. it as a learning experience. But uh, tip of the cap to the old coach. You know he's kind of lost in the shuffle a little bit because when you think of Down River hockey, you think of Trenton hockey. Sure, it's good to see another program down there. And he's Woodhaven had some good seasons. Good for coach. Yeah, it is. And and you know what? To me, John, um, when you get moments like this, I don't care where it is. I don't care what school it is. The fact that you've been able to last so long, I, I think that's pretty telling because there are so many factors that come into play. I mean, we talked about the work, but you have to have success too. Yep. Because if you're not having success, more often than not, you know, somebody's going, well, thanks for your efforts, but we're going to move on. So uh, big time shout out to Coach Sullivan. All right. So that's it for Kids Corner, the high school hockey report on the State Champs Podcast Network. We'll chat again soon. I, I like doing this. Thanks I, for having I, me, buddy. I have a good feeling we're going to be doing this next week. Good. I look forward to it, yeah. All right, have a good one, guys.